Jill was a kindergarten teacher. Once, when she was at work having a class, her head teacher came in and said Jill was off for the day. She sent the employee home and gave her someone's phone number before leaving. Not suspecting anything bad, Jill got into her car and made a call. A woman answered. She was a social activist and she had some bad news. Photos of naked Jill had just been posted online, access free. The head teacher had seen them too and made a comment, something like, fire this Jill broke into tears. She had taken these pictures privately. They were certainly not meant for the public eye. Below the photos, there were a bunch of degrading comments. As for the website's owner, he met the demands to delete such photos with a very detailed answer. LOL. The woman that contacted Jill was faced with the very same problem. Her name is Charlotte Laws. She's a known talk show host and social activist. The explicit pictures were not hers, but her daughter's, Kayla's. Kayla had just begun her acting career while working as a waitress. She was serving dishes to the guests one day when her friend Susan called her. Your topless photo is posted on Is Anyone Up? website, she told. A website? Kayla never gave her pictures to anyone. What girl doesn't take selfies before a mirror? Kayla, too, did a private photo shoot. Only one of the pictures was topless. The girl sent them to her own email and downloaded the files to her PC. She really should have used a USB cable. Someone hacked her email, obtained the photos, chose the topless one, and posted it online with the girl's full name for all to see. And comments were plenty. Kayla checked the traffic for Is Anyone Up? 300,000 visitors a day. She could never show her face at work now. Kayla thought her career was over. She locked herself up in her bedroom, crying her eyes out. Meanwhile, her mother, Charlotte, rolled up the sleeves. Maybe simply asking would be enough. After all, the pictures went public without Kayla's consent. Charlotte sent a letter to the website's owner, but he couldn't care less. There he is. Uh, my name's Hunter Moore and I'm a scumbag, a DJ, and known for isanyoneup.com. What we know about Moore is only what he tells us. He's a public figure, famous for his website, pics and videos with alcohol, women, and even drugs. Is there anything else to him? In 2012, Hunter was 26 and he lived in Los Angeles. He constantly nagged his girlfriend about sending her suggestive photos to him. Then. Moore made a blog where he published the pictures. Soon, it grew into a website where Hunter would post photos of anyone and from anyone. From angry exes, for example. The site was named, Is Anyone Up? Pure Evil. That's what Hunter has to say about the fruits of his labor. Moore thinks he can do anything, and no one can stop him. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, variables uh, and a lot of stuff that can go wrong in f***ing a pretty girl. Not to mention a waste of f***ing time. Hunter Moore didn't finish high school and didn't learn any profession. But there is a sphere where he considers himself a real pro, ruining people's lives. A lot of women whose photos ended up on the website have suicidal thoughts. At least many say it on social media that life gets unbearable after things like that happen. Moore specifically looks for such comments and publishes them under the pictures. Everyone hates Hunter, but he's got a parish of his own. An obscene number of people are willing to ridicule other people's bodies. According to Hunter, he gets 30 million views a month. Later on, he'd say he had a god complex. At the time, there were no laws to make him take photos off the website. So Hunter stands his ground. He posts more and more pics, and he's happy when someone adds fuel to the flames. People threaten me with lawsuits every day, which is funny because it fuels the site. They send me all this crazy stuff, but at the same time, they're just building content for my site, which just makes me more popular. In September 2011, Facebook threatens to sue Hunter when he posts screenshots of the website in his profile. Seems like Moore didn't waste much time writing an answer. He replied to the Facebook lawyers with a photo of his genitals. 
Moore thinks he's a hotshot. He has the audacity to take part in different shows and do interviews. As for his victims, he's got only one thing to say. It's their own fault. It started with you and you took these pictures. I don't know how old you are, but I'm sure, you know, you're smart and go to school. I mean, it's 2012. What do you expect to happen? Somebody's going to monetize this. I mean, um, and I was the person to do it. But Kayla's mother, Charlotte, wasn't giving up without a fight. First, she copyrighted the photos and contacted Hunter himself. His reaction was predictable. Then, Charlotte talked to his publicist, provider, hosting company, and advertisers. Next, she consulted lawyers. It turned out there were no criminal laws for this kind of situation. Even in civil courts, such cases were very few. So it seemed there was no hope. Moore held all the aces. Moreover, he and his suite decided to hush the woman who was putting grit in their machine. Here's what Charlotte remembers about the investigation. The phone rang. It was like a gun. It had become a powerful way to threaten and to terrorize me. It was one of my enemy's weapons. I reluctantly picked up the receiver. We, we know where, where you, you live, live, a muffled male voice spoke. Your, Your life, life will be, be ruined. ruined. He hung up. A caller that morning had told me I would be raped, tortured, and killed. But the phone calls would be a bit later. So for now, Charlotte and Kayla went to the police where a female cop told them, why take pictures like this if you don't want them on the internet? It didn't stop Charlotte. Instead, she raised the stakes. She went straight to the FBI. But agents there, too, had little interest in the case. So Charlotte had to remind them of a similar incident, but with a photo of a celebrity. I see, I replied sarcastically. You help Scarlett Johansson when she gets hacked but you won't help the average person. The man sighed as if he didn't have the energy to fight me. Just a moment, I will transfer you to a detective. Now, when the stakes were high, Charlotte meant to secure her chance of winning. So she was preparing thoroughly and started gathering information about the victims. That was when she met the kindergarten teacher, Jill, and others, about 40 women all in all. Most of these victims are just, they don't want to tell their families, they don't want to tell their friends, they're embarrassed, they're afraid. It's scary because the internet is everywhere and it can just, you know, multiply and ruin your reputation. Some women fell victim to hackers. Some pictures were created in Photoshop and some were sent by an angry ex. The cases of so-called revenge <laughs> Most of is anyone up visitors were men. Charlotte amassed boxes of information and after she talked to Hunter Moore's lawyer for a second time, Kayla's photos disappeared from the website. Later on, Charlotte managed to take some other photos off the page. Finally, she was getting lucky. The FBI took the case. Law's house even became a nerve center for the investigation. This is where the agents met the victims. One day in April 2012, fans typed in the website's address. But instead of the usual nude pics, they saw a text about bullying survivors. They tried to reload the website again and again, but their harassing comments about the women's pictures were no more. Where did it all go? Is anyone up was sold. After the purchase, the new owner immediately redirected the traffic to an anti-bullying resource. Meet James McGibney. We were emailing quite a bit and I had to pretend to be Hunter's friend to gain his trust. I just had to keep making sure that I was saying the right things. We didn't want the, the fish to get off the hook. Hunter Moore knew he was on a slippery slope by then, so he agreed to sell the website. But he had no idea what exactly would happen to it. When the website disappeared, Moore exploded in rage. He threatened to rape McGibney's wife and accused James of being a pedophile. Next year, though, James would sue Moore for defamation and gain a quarter million dollars. Meanwhile, Charlotte Laws was getting a taste of it. A journalist she knew published her story in the Village Voice. The article was far from flattering, from Moore's perspective, but he surely had an answer ready. I will literally f***ing buy a first-class f***ing plane ticket right now, eat an amazing meal, buy a gun in New York, and f***ing kill whoever talked about my FBI investigation. I'm that over it. I'm actually mad right now. 
As for Charlotte, Moore said he'd destroy her. Threat calls and stalkers became commonplace. Once, late at night, Charlotte's phone rang. She thought she'd again hear someone's promise to kill her, but this time, it was a different caller. The people who contacted Charlotte were anonymous helpers. Hackers from the anonymous organization thought they should do the right thing and deal with Hunter, and they posted a lot of his personal information online. He embodied, uh, you know, all of the bad things, all of the bad instincts of human nature. On a January morning of 2014, police officers surrounded the bed Hunter Moore was lying in at home and arrested him. Later, the man pled guilty and was sentenced to 2.5 years in prison. The hacker who searched for pictures and sold them to Moore faced a seven-year sentence, but only got 25 months. Moore would later claim that the arrogant man his fans and haters knew was only a role he played for the viewers, and the feds took him too seriously for that matter. That part of me would is actually a part of me, but the rest of it is just not based in reality. Most entertainers, it's entertainment. We're entertaining, so we are playing a character. Um, you know, I have tattoos and I, I look like a scumbag, but in reality, I'm you know I got a big ass fat cat that I love to death, and I don't really like leaving the house. Behind bars, Moore worked in a garden, growing nectarines. He was released from prison in 2017 and began producing music. Then he started a couple of other websites. Both main characters of this story, Charlotte Laws and Hunter Moore, wrote books about their experience with Is Anyone Up? It turns out, after all, Moore's webpage made a positive social impact. Anti-revenge laws appeared, particularly in the US. Most of the states have them. And in 2019, a federal bill called the SHIELD Act, stopping harmful image exploitation and limiting distribution was introduced. It is still to be passed and become a federal law.